So the FNAF movie is officially out and uh, there's a lot of things to say about it. I don't believe that the reviews of it are perfectly right, but um, you're going to hear my reviews if you clicked on this video and you decide to stay around. So uh, you should be able to skip to this time jump here, just anywhere on the screen right now. I'm, I'm pointing into the air right now, I'm not sure why, uh, for the spoiler review. But if you haven't seen it yet, what's wrong with you? Go watch the movie already. What? Why are you doing this already? Just go watch it. Huh. Sorry. Okay. So, time for the spoiler free. It is misclassified as a horror movie. It is not a horror movie because it takes the plot first. Horror movies do not take the plot first. Thriller movies do that. That is the definition of a thriller movie. It has two rules. Story first, kill second. This movie does that. It's not classified correctly as a horror movie. So which kind of leads into this next point of if you wanted the animatronics to be in a lot of the movie, you're going to be disappointed. I hate to break that to you. It's, they're not in a lot of it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, it's, it's a good movie, I believe. I don't think that the nearly the, the under 30% that it has on Rotten Tomatoes right now for critic score is right. It's not that bad. If you're a fan of the series which I'm assuming most of you are, um, I think you're going to rate this around an 8 or a 7.5. If you're not a fan of the series, it doesn't cater towards non-fans of the series, which Scott and Blumhouse even said it wasn't going to. They specifically said that it's not going... It's going to cater more towards the fans that have been waiting for this for nearly a decade. And... While, yeah, that sucks for people that just want to see the movie because it looks cool, it it's an understandable story to a point. And um, I feel like that's all I could say on this movie without going into spoiler territory. So, yeah, we're going to hop into that right now. So, uh, yeah. So, in the movie, we follow Mike and his sister Abby as Mike gets a new job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And the time period for this movie is kind of confusing if you're not paying very close attention because you'd think it would be in modern day but it's actually said in the year 2000 if you uh look at the um sorry video camera screen while he is waiting to get uh introduced to steve raglan the career counselor aka william afton um, it actually does say, I think it's April 6, 2000, just 2000. So, this is set in very, in like, just the year 2000, right? So, they have been sitting there for 20 years. The animatronics have been sitting there for 20 years, and it's been 20 years since the, um, uh, the first MCI, or the Missing Children's Incident. And, I think that the story for this movie is good to a point. There's... That like, there's a few things that I don't like, and the biggest problem I have with the story of this movie is Golden Freddy. He, <sighs> we don't see the actual animatronic Golden Freddy nearly at all. He's in like one scene where he brings Abby to the pizzeria, and that's about it. And we don't get a motive for his character. Or they want Abby to be killed in a suit. That way they can have a friend. Now they probably don't understand that putting her in a suit would kill her. But but they just want a friend, right? Understandably so. You have the same four friends for 20 years. I'd want, I'd want a new friend too. Um, and... But Golden Freddy just doesn't have really a motive shown. Like, he doesn't help bring her in there. He just leads her there. Um, if you're wanting a story that follows the game lore, this is not it. This very distinctively was shown to not follow the game lore. Garrett, uh, Mike's brother, isn't the crying child. Abby isn't Elizabeth. And Vanessa is the daughter of William Afton, and Mike is not related to Afton at all. Not connected story-wise remotely. So, if you're wanting a 
a just a recap of the first games with the movie, you're not getting that. It's kind of like how the, the Silver Rise trilogy or the novel trilogy was a was a re not a retelling, but a, a separate story in a fracture of the FNAF universe. It is a what if scenario, you know, like kind of how Marvel's what if show showed like a bunch of scenarios. This is the what if scenario of the FNAF universe. This isn't canon, but this is a canon that you can follow. Same, same as the books. The books, the games, and the movie have all three different separate universes. But, I will mention, each each one of these fractures of the FNAF universe does have elements that share and connect them. Like, for example, in the, the Springlock suit that they try to put Abby into is nearly a one-for-one -one recreation of the Anadol from the Silver Eyes trilogy and Fazbear Frights, which is just cool, but it also is kind of confusing because we have no mention that Henry's in this movie at all, by the way. Yeah, he's just not there. Um, and that leads me into another thing that they just don't really explain a lot about the movie. Like, they don't explain why William was pretending to be Steve Raglan. They don't explain what the murder device was. They don't explain if Henry's in there or not. They don't explain or go into detail about Vanessa's relationship with Afton. They don't go into detail about or explain anything about the, like the suits and how they work and why William is wearing the Springlock suits still. They don't go into ex explanation of where Golden Freddy was the whole time. And a lot of these things can be like common sense together. But whenever you have a movie that has so many plot points that they don't explain at all, it it kind of it kind of throws you off a little bit because it just doesn't tell you information that you think it should be. And on the flip side of that, my biggest problem with this movie, my absolutely biggest problem with this movie, not Golden Freddy or anything like that, is Vanessa and William. And not anything that will not anything of Matthew Lord's acting or anything in like that. Although, I think that he could have been a little bit more crazy, but they, I think I get that they went for a more serious and a more, like, slightly psychotic, but also smart tone, kind of like uh, Patrick Bateman in the early in the early um, runtime of American Psycho. Like, he's smart, but you can tell there's a level of craziness there, right? And... They show, they show his insanity way more through actions than they do through his words and tone. And that that threw me off on a first watch. I recently rewatched at least that part on Peacock. And uh, his, his whole entry scene. And while he has the mask on, he is so cool. He is super threatening. And when he takes the mask off, I get what they were going for with... When he has the mask on, he's insane. And he's going to f go... He's absolutely wrecking Mike, right? But when he takes the mask off, he's talking to Vanessa. Mike's unconscious then, but he's talking directly to Vanessa. And he has less... And he, his tone switches, his motive switches for him, his communication with these characters. And he's he was going just insanity and trying to make Mike suffer. And then he's just ticked off at Vanessa. And then he's kind of confused with Abby, and then kind of ticked off at her. And that wouldn't be as bad. That would, the, the whole tonal switch would have been more understandable, and would have been better if the scene before he was introduced hadn't happened. Now, if you haven't seen the movies, which I'm not sure why you're watching this part if you haven't seen the movie, the whole scene before has Vanessa explaining and answering pretty much every question we had about William. Except for the whole, why is he pretending to be a career counselor? It explains that he killed Garrett. It explains that it's his daughter. It explains that he built the place. It explains that he murdered the five children. It explains that he uses the suit. It explains that he probably kills security guards. They kind of mentioned that. But, like, it just, it's, it just throws you off because you're left with, like, the scene before the man is even introduced as William Afton into the movie... You already know who he is. So by the time he shows up, he's like, "Yeah, Mike, I killed your brother, and now it's now I'm gonna kill you too." It's called symmetry, my friend. 
and being actually very threatening. You already pretty much have a character bio for the dude. Like, you have everything that Vanessa just told you. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. By the time he is introduced, all mystique and macabre is gone. And you know who this character is. And that just removes a level of intimidation from him that I wish that they had kept longer. And if they hadn't explained it too, if they hadn't explained everything that they, every question that they had for him, then we would have been able to have more time with him. Because he would have been able to actually get some time to explain that he killed Garrett, explain how he killed the kids, you know? Do all of that and let him explain it himself. But then we have Vanessa, who just pretty much expedition dumps on us for two minutes, and then. But it's not exposition dump on the whole movie, it's exposition dump on a character we're about to meet. Let him explain himself. And that just takes away from the whole the whole coolness of the character. So that was that was the negative parts. Uh on to the positives though. Absolutely atmosphere amazing. Down to the sm the, they like down to the smallest details I know. Like in the first scene whenever he's climbing through the vent, the other security guard is coming through the vent. There is balloons covered in dirt in the corner. Don't know if you noticed that. Balloons covered in dirt in the corner. How... Uh, I sound like a crazy person, but... They took so much time for this movie to film a... To put balloons covered in dirt in a slight corner of a scene that we're see a second of. And... Hold... Like... They just will go so into their detail. From, and it's not even the small stuff, it's the wide scope. Like, the building feels like the atmosphere that you're in. And a lot of people I've seen do reviews of this say that they don't get the whole premise of the series right, or the game right. And they say that the premise of the game is it's claustrophobic, that you're not, that you can't leave. I disagree. You, in the first game, it's, it's less of a claustrophobic and you can't leave, and more of a... I'm taking down the hours to where I can leave. It's not a overcoming feeling of dread that you're stuck here forever, and more of a like anticipation and anxiety about when when are you getting off your shift, you know? And I feel like they do that well, um, kinda to a point. I don't feel like they get the whole point of the animatronics trying to attack him right. I feel like for at least the first two nights. There should have been them actually trying to uh, kill Mike, you know? Because he gets injured, I think, tw three times in the whole movie. And two of them are the ghosts that can apparently Freddy Krueger themselves to make him actually feel pain in the real world. And then the third one is him getting kicked in the head by, by uh, William Afton. He never actually gets attacked by any of the animatronics. The only injuries that the animatronics actually do is to William, the break-in people, and an accidental explosion that knocks Abby out for a little bit. Like, it just... It just doesn't... Like... I feel like... And I get the point that, they, that the animatronics in this movie are not supposed to be the antagonists, but when you don't introduce the actual antagonist until the last 15 minutes of the movie... You're left with antagonists that aren't really antagonists, but you have no other idea who else they would be. And, like, that just... I feel like they could have held off to, like, oh, they're friendly until the third night. You know? Because for the first two, he doesn't even know that the things are alive. And the th in the third night, he realizes they're alive. And the fourth night, he comes back and starts playing with them. And then the fifth night, he... RKO's him with electric powers, and then, like, they just off after him. And, I mean, like, the, the whole threat of the animatronics being able to kill the security guards isn't there. Um, I feel as though that the ending was done pretty perfectly. Um, also, by the way, just a quick aside... If you're looking for this to be a movie, or I, I know I said this before, if you're looking for, for this to be a movie that 
is more similar to the games, you're not gonna get that. I hate to break it to you, but in all honesty, this is more similar to the first book in the novel trilogy of called Silver Eyes in every way. I mean, if you look at them side by side, there's a main character who goes to Freddy's with a group of friends, kinda, gets attacked by the animatronics for a little bit, interacts with Springtrap who tries to kill them, um, and then the animatronic, and then they activate the spring locks, and the animatronics drag him back away as the building collapses. And he's still alive. Like, they're more similar to the book in every way. They're like, they're not a one-for-one -one parallel, but if you break it down into the, the light parts of the story, eh, they're, they're pretty similar, and way more similar than it is to the game. Um, and I'm fine with that. Like, I knew going into this movie that this was not going to be a beat-for-beat -beat representation of the games because it couldn't be. I also knew that this wasn't going to be a beat-for-beat -beat representation of the books. I feel like what they did is they tried to put them both together, and I feel like when they actually did that, it worked out pretty well. Like, the story, while a little bit confusing in the movie, is actually understandable decently. I mean, there's a couple things that I wish they would have answered, but it's more understandable. Um... But the ending, the ending was a bit ambiguous um, on what happened there. Like, why did the building collapse? Where did, why, why did they bring Afton back there? And also, issues on Golden Freddy's, which I am going to cover in about three, two...